So the painting we're going to be looking at today is A Starry Night Over the Rhone by Vincent van Gogh, and it was started in 1888 and completed in 1889. So Vincent van Gogh was a Dutch post-impressionist artist, very, very famous in the post-impressionist um, genre. He was born March 30th, 1853 in Zinder, Netherlands, and he died July 29th, 1890. Now, while he was alive, he suffered from some pretty intense mental health complications, which unfortunately led him to take his own life. Now, after he died, he gained very Im immense fame for his paintings and his style, which he was never really recognized during his life for his paintings, but after he died, he became very, very famous for them. He was also very well known for his extensive, extensive collection of letters that were published after his death that really gave everybody a peek into his life. Now, some background on the painting here. So it was completed in Arles in the September of 1889 while Van Gogh was renting a home there. It was right overlooking the banks of the river, as you can probably tell from the painting. Now, back at this time, gaslighting was still relatively new to the city, and everyone was still trying to get used to it. It was painting along the banks of the Rhone, near the home where Van Gogh was renting. And it was one of a set of three paintings all depicting the night sky as a focal point that were all completed around the same time. The other two are Café Terrace at Night and the portrait of Eugene Bach, which was actually a good friend of Van Gogh's. So it's the predecessor to the way more famous Starry Night, which I'm sure everyone is familiar with. Now that painting has kind of a more frantic feel. It was completed while he was being institutionalized for mental health problems. This one, in comparison, is kind of more serene, I guess? So a brief description of the painting, as you can see here. It's a nighttime view of the Rhone River from the bank, as the title implies. The Big Dipper constellation shines from the sky above here. You can see the North Star to the left. Now this is kind of the lightest part of the painting. Your eyes are drawn upward to it. Now the harsh gas lightings from the building along the other side of the bank are shining and they cast reflections into the water, so you kind of have a steep contrast there. Now there's a small boat docked by the bank right here. It's kind of hard to make out, but you can see it kind of in parallel lines with those lights in the reflection. And there's also a pair of lovers strolling along the bank down here. Kind of hard to make out, but they're there. So the form of this painting, you have the element of lines. So the brush strokes kind of descend from being horizontal, pretty straight, to being more angular when you get down to this bank right here, so you kind of have this weird perspective going on. Now the light and value aspect. So your eyes are drawn upward because you have a kind of descending from lightest to darkest down here. So you have kind of the murky bank with those shades of green to the steep contrast with the dark shades of blue with the bright golds. And then up here with the lighter shades of gold and the lighter lights from the stars. So you kind of have that light source that you can make out up here and it draws your eyes from the bottom to the top. As far as color goes, you have the complementary blend between the blue and the yellow. So right here you kind of don't have a lot of contrast, but you can definitely see those complementary colors of the light yellow with the light blue. Down here it's a more steep contrast. You have the bright gold up against the kind of darker blues. And then down here, you still have that element, but now it's blending into a more murky green, as I mentioned earlier. Now the texture, you have broad, thick strokes of paint. You can even see it coming up off of the paper here. Now this is oil on canvas, so that allows for kind of a more fully formed texture of the painting. So it almost, you can almost see where he slathered the paint onto the board in these huge strokes. And that kind of creates a cool effect up here. And that's also where you get this kind of choppy ripple effect in the water. You can see where he utilized that. Now in the space, you kind of have this single vanishing point in the horizon. So you have depth created that way. Um, you also kind of see where the bank is curving around this side. And the perspective, the bank is getting closer to the other side here. 
where it kind of gets further away, and then here you have the illusion of it coming just a little bit closer too. So it kind of creates this rounded, almost like you're looking out across a lake. But as we know from the title, it is indeed a river. So as far as motion goes, you have kind of this implied ripple effect going on in the water, which he created with those broad strokes. So you can almost see it moving as you'd imagine a river moving. Now, since you have that kind of curved effect where it's getting closer to you to further away, you can also ma almost imagine it flowing to the right, which I'm not sure which way the actual river flows, but the way he's painted it, you can see the illusion of it moving rightward. And as far as time goes, obviously this is nighttime. You can tell almost that the lovers are strolling along this bank here. So some conclusions we can draw about this. So the image flows from the light tones to the dark tones, as you can see, and it kind of draws your eyes upward, as I mentioned. So you'd imagine that this painting would be hanging where you'd be looking up at it. So since you have kind of these lighter colors here and these darker colors here, the point of contrast where you have the light and the dark blended is kind of a transitional point between them. Now that is interesting because as you go from the top to the bottom, you notice the things that are more permanent flowing into the things more temporary. In the grand scheme of things, you have the heavens above, which we assume were created long, long time ago, and you know that these stars aren't moving anytime soon. So you kind of have this permanence of the sky, specifically the night sky. Then you go down to the river, which the river has been there for decades and eons, but it's still constantly moving. So it's kind of both this fixed point and this transitional point. And then you have here with the boat, which is very temporary, as well as the couple, which is also temporary. So it's kind of interesting how it goes from permanent to temporary as you're going from top to bottom. And going off of that, the boat and the lovers kind of seem like an afterthought, especially the lovers. The boat is a little bit fleshed out, but it's kind of just blending into the rest of the river, you kind of have to look carefully to see it. The lovers especially, so they're so dark and they barely contrast with the foreground that it almost seems like he added them later, like they were kind of a finishing touch. Now along with that, the boat, it's hard to make out if it's just simply floating here or if it's even sinking into the water, which is a very important question to ask because it makes you wonder what his intentions were with the piece. Along with that, the gas lighting, as I mentioned earlier, it was still very new at this point. So the fact that it contrasts so harshly and it seems to kind of draw our eyes to it, it makes you wonder, was he in awe of this new innovation or was he simply ashamed of it? Because it seems like, it seems very beautiful to us looking at it now. But in contrast with these stars, kind of this more brighter, heavenly aura we get up here, this almost seems too harsh, and it makes you wonder what his true thoughts were about the subject. And here's my work cited. Thank you for watching this presentation, and I hope you enjoyed it.